Hello, this is Cheryl Austin, Extension Agent, Family and Community Health with the Cooperative Extension Program, and this is Healthy Eating Tips for the Family. So for eating healthy, we want to start with my plate. My plate shows us how to eat a variety of foods from all of the food groups. We want half of our plate to be fruit and vegetables, a fourth of the plate grains, a fourth protein, and of course our dairy. Uh, you can eat fresh, frozen, or canned fruits and vegetables. Just if you're going for canned fruits and vegetables, look for those that are low in sodium. And as far as fruit, uh, go for the kind that is canned in its 100% uh, juice or in water. Also, you want to eat a rainbow of colors with your fruit and vegetables. Each uh, color has different nutrients that are going to help our body work the way it should. When it comes to grains, you want to look for more whole grains and actually look for that word whole in the ingredient list. Just because something is uh, a brown color or just because it mentions the word whole on the packaging, it may not be an actual, actual whole grain product. So always look at the ingredient list and look for like whole grain, flour, whole wheat. Uh, but look for that word whole in the uh, ingredient list. And then when it comes to protein, look for lean sources of protein, um, meats that have a small amount of visible fat. Um, some other sources of protein are eggs, peanut butter, nuts and beans. And then, of course, meat, poultry, and seafood. And then when it comes to your dairy, you want to uh, move to your lower fat or your fat-free choices. And if you're unsure about how many calories you need per day, you can go to MyPlate.gov and click on the MyPlate plan. And uh, you can put in your age, your weight, your gender, and it will let you know an estimate of how many calories you need to maintain your current weight. Or if you're trying to lose weight, then you know you would make that number a little bit less. Now you always wanna read the Nutrition Facts label. This label helps us make wiser decisions as far as how many portions we intake. And we can also compare and contrast food items when we are in the grocery store. The first thing that we wanna look at is the serving information, the serving size. So in this particular example, the serving size is one cup. So that means that everything else below that is what you will find in one cup of this food item. So if it's 280 calories, you're getting 280 calories in one cup. If it's nine grams of total fat, you're getting nine grams of fat in one cup of this particular food item. So next you wanna look at the calories and you can, again, compare products to see which one is gonna give you less calories. And then you look at the nutrient section, how much fiber is in uh, this particular item, how much sugar, how much uh, of vitamins and minerals is it providing for me? And then the percent daily value. The percent daily value just gives us, for an example, um, total fat, is 12% daily, you're getting 12% of the daily value. So that means if I am on a 2000 calorie a day uh, meal plan, then I am getting 12% of what I need a day in fat in this particular, um, in one cup of this particular food item. So when you look at that, if something is 5% or less, that's low. If it's 20% or more, that's high. So we want our vitamins and minerals to be more like the 20% or more. But we want things like fat, cholesterol, sodium, and sugar to be closer to that 5% or less. And then we want to be salt smart. Uh, first of all, we're going to read that label. And again, we're going to look for... Um, food items that are give us that 5% or less or that are closer to that 5% or less of our daily value. Um, when we're eating fruits and vegetables, 
we want to look for more whole fruits and vegetables. And if we have to go for canned, then we're going to buy the kind that have no added salt or that are lower in salt. Look for those keywords on the packaging that will let you know that this is a higher in sodium product. The more we prepare foods at home, the more control we have over how much salt is in our food. We want to go easy on sauces. The more you begin to add sauces and condiments, you might be adding more uh, sodium, more salt to, that, uh, to your meals. And just find more ways to spice it up. Look for more herbs and spices that are non-salt, non-sodium sources that you can add to your meals. And then some tips for cutting back on added sugar. We can start with thinking about our drinks. Um, drinking water instead of soda or, well, regular soda or lemonade or sports drinks. Um, instead, try sparkling water and you can put lemon wedges or small pieces of fresh fruit in your water. You can also add things like cinnamon, nutmeg, cocoa powder to give you that sugary taste, but without the calories. And it's okay to satisfy your sweet tooth just in moderation and maybe enjoy more fruit as a dessert. Or if you get that uh, sweets when you're eating out or even at home, split it with someone, split it with a friend or a family member. Um, we're going to read that label as well and look for those uh, food items that have less sugar. Now healthy snacking. Snacking can be a good thing because it keeps us satisfied in between meals so we're not um, overeating with our meals. But on the other hand, snacking can also get out of hand. And uh, if we go overboard with it, um, we can add on a lot of extra calories and weight. And so some tips for healthy snacking is building your own, making your own trail mix um, with different items, popcorn, dried fruit, maybe a little bit of chocolate chips, nuts and seeds. And this is a good way to put it in uh, little sandwich bags and create your own portions instead of the portions that you would buy from packaged items out of the store. And then prepping those snacks ahead of time so that we make healthy snacking an easy choice. If it's already prepared and all I have to do is grab it out of the refrigerator or off the table, and then I'm going to, it's going to be easier for me to choose what's healthier instead of what's non-healthy. And keeping our fridge stocked with cut up fruits and vegetables that are visible and within reach, again, it makes um, healthy snacking the easier choice. Uh, look for combos with our snacks. So instead of maybe me just eating crackers by itself, I can maybe add uh, some type of nut butter to those crackers. So try to look for um, two different food groups to put together for your snack, um, like yogurt and fruit, yogurt and berries, or yogurt and apples, something like that, but make it a combo. So we also want to cut back on our saturated fat. Saturated fat comes in food and drinks uh, from animal products like dairy, meat, and poultry. Uh, they're going to be solid at room temperature like butter or cream cheese, coconut, and palm oil. They can be found in desserts and baked goods and pizza. Uh, so you want to look for some unsaturated fat sources. So again, start off by reading that food label and look for those food items that show more unsaturated fat. Um, you can also look at foods like salmon, tuna, nuts, seeds, avocado, and then your oils, your vegetable oils, olive, canola, peanuts, sunflower, corn. And then go for the lean cuts of meat, less visible fat, grill it or bake it instead of frying it. And then with your dairy, try to choose more 1% or fat-free. And I'll just leave you with some mindful eating tips. Mindful eating just means that I'm paying more attention. And so, first of all, let me pay attention to why I'm even eating. Am I eating because I'm hungry? 
or am I eating because I'm bored or because I'm stressed? So we want to make sure that when we do eat, it is actually because of our hunger. And then we do want to eat slow. The slower we eat, we give our brain more time to process when we are full. And then you can always start off filling your plate with less food. If there's food left um, in the pots, in the pans, then I know that I can always go back. So why don't I start with less and see if less fills me up? I can also use smaller dishes. Again, I'm starting with less. If I see that I'm still hungry, I can always go back for more if I'm truly hungry. But it might even help to eat a little and then wait a little while and see if you actually are hungry for more or if that little bit filled you up. Limit distractions. When we eat, when we are distracted, if I am doing things on the computer or I'm on my phone or I'm watching TV or doing other things while eating, because of that distraction, I might tend to eat more because, again, I am not paying attention at that time to my body. And uh, serve out your portions instead of eating from the package. When we eat from the package, there's no way for us to remember or know how many servings I'm actually eating from that food item. So um, if I serve out my portions ahead of time, I know exactly what I am eating. I hope that you have enjoyed all of these tips and I hope that it has made an impact on um, helping you to eat healthier with yourself and your family.